Okay, so um, Talatu Filomina Zamani Henry is the executive director of Zamani Center and the president of Zamani Foundation, a registered nonprofit organization advocating for peace and development for the less privileged in the society. Filomena is passionate about self-development and loves to seek knowledge. She's passionate about self-development and will go to length to learn new th things. She believes and always says, if knowledge is as far as China, seek it. She earned her BSc honors in political science and administration from the prestigious University of Meiduguri, Borno State, Nigeria, and a postgraduate degree in interrelational relations International Relations and Diplomacy from the Federal Polytechnic Kaduna. She also badged an MSc in Defense and Strategic Studies from the prestigious Nigerian Defense Academy Kaduna, Nigeria, and an Executive Master's in Customer Service from the Customer Service Institute in the United States. She is currently undergoing a PhD in Peace Studies at the United Nations University for Peace. Over the past 23 years, Telatu has developed most of her has devoted most of her time to running her foundation, the Zamani Foundation, where she has developed innovative services for caring for the less privileged and women, youth, and children in the society. This is illustrated by the significant number of volunteers, particularly in the various aspects of the organization's projects and activities. Orphans. Orphans and the less privileged in various orphanage homes, villages, communities, schools, and religious institutions have benefited from her and Zamani Foundation's generous donation of welfare materials, books, food items, scholarships, etc. She has worked in both the profit and non-profit organizations with years of experience in business development, customer service, customer service management. <clears throat> customer service management, marketing, and industrial relations. She was a one-time special advisor to the Commission of Women Affairs in 2015. Over the years, she attended and even organized several courses and seminars on, national, and on nation building, uh, mentoring, peace building, business and communications, training on alternative dispute resolution, ADR, leadership, peace, nonprofit, youth, women, Ministry, uh, ministry and Negotiation, Conflict Resolution, etc. Philomena is a member of the Nigerian Institute of Management, Chartered Institute of Leadership and Good Governance in Africa, Emergency, Crisis, Disaster, Safety, Environmental and Risk Management Institute, and Association of Professional Negotiators and Mediators. She is the convener of She Forum, a safe space for women, traditional and religious leaders, wives to network, unwind and express themselves and receive counseling from experts. This meeting spring 78 women at her meetings and has risen significantly with a, uh, with a yearly conference giving women solace and a sense of identity. Philomena runs an etiquette and leadership book club for young children where they are groomed on etiquette, leadership, and instilling a reading and writing culture in them. The success is significantly alarming. Philomena is the national coordinator of Women International League for Peace and Freedom, the country liaison to Africa, and the national coordinator women. Uh, the National Coordinator of Women International League for Peace and Freedom, and National Coordinator of Women's Situation Room Nigeria. Talati is both a national and international election observer. She's currently national focal point for United Nations Environment Program, UNEP, and United Nations Convention to Combat Desertification, UNCCD. She has been involved in several humanitarian activities. In addition to English, she speaks Hausa. She's a team player whose passion is to give care, love, and comfort to those in need. She is a recognized professional, exceedingly um, commended by the government and private sector um, stakeholders as the go-to person on mobilization for exemplary leadership Problem solving capabilities and change agent. Mrs. Salatu Filomena Zamani is a peace ambassador. She's married with children. It is my pleasure to welcome you, Mrs. Filomena Zamani, to your session. Um, I hope you have a wonderful um, time with you this afternoon.
Thank you very much for having me this afternoon. Before I proceed, I'd like to say a shout out to all the rural women in the world. The rural women have gone and done so much, impacted the nation. They have done so many things. And this day, we all need to celebrate them for the many works they have done, impacting families, impact, impacting the community and whatnot. Now, I was asked to speak about uh, the rural women and their health. First of all, I would say, who is a woman? The woman is a primary caregiver and caretaker of, of her children and elders in every country. What she does is that she gives life to everything that she has put her hands to do. A woman is a confident. A woman has a womb. People say that a woman has a womb and she can multiply. Whatever you give to her, she multiplies it. Now, who is a rural woman? The rural woman is a woman who, like every other woman, does this and much more. The only difference is that she's in a remote place where she uh, thinks uh, the, the economic situation there is not as the, that in the urban areas. Now let's look at health. What does health mean to you? Health, I would say, is a state of complete physical, mental, and social well-being. Not merely the absence of disease, I would say. Excuse me, ma'am. Oh, um, you're not sharing your screen, so we can't see your presentation. Right. Oh, okay. Okay, I thought I can do that from here. Um. Please try again now. You've made co-host, so you should be able to share your screen. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, Mrs. Flomina, can are you still having trouble sharing screen? We can we can share from our end, and you know, uh, we'll just help control the pace of your uh, um, slide, however you want it. Uh, 
Um, Sis Philomena, are you still with us? Hello. Yes, I'm here. Sorry, I, I muted myself. Yes, I'm, I'm, I'm asking if you still have difficulty sharing your screen. Um, if that's the case, we can we can share your, your slides from our end. And, you know, Please you just do. tell us how you want us to control. Okay. Um, just give us a few minutes. We'll be sharing your screen shortly, your slides shortly. Hello, Mrs. Philomena. Um, your slide uh, is, is now up. Can you see the screen? Yes, I can. All right. So Thank you, you know, just much. give us instructions uh, whenever you want us to go. For, you know, next slide or previous slide. I will do that. Thank you so much. Okay. So I think um, should I start all over again? Yes, please. Yeah. Hope you don't mind. 
Oh, no problem. All right, thank you. Okay, so thank you very much, Iwi, for this opportunity. Today we'll be talking about health for the rural woman. First of all, who is a woman? Uh, I've started on the next slide, please. So a woman is the confidence. A woman is, uh, when we say woman, who? It's a woman with a womb. And the woman means that she can multiply. She has multiply. Whatever you give to her, she multiplies it. You give her sperm, she gives you children. You give her, uh, sometimes you give them trouble, trouble, and then they give you a hell of trouble. And then um, a man, the woman is not a man. And so she, 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 it's a multiplier. As I said earlier, whatever you give to her, she multiplies it. And so she's a confident, she's a mother. When she takes care of society, she takes care of her children. She's a primary caregiver of children and elderly ones. In every country, the role, the traditional role of a woman is to take care, to love, to nurture, to multiply. Next slide, please. So the rural woman is, though she's in the, the uh, she has every characteristics like every other woman. The only thing is that the rural woman is in a remote area where she cannot fend for herself, most likely cannot fend for herself. She's um, thing the economic, economically, she's not like the other woman. So let's look at health. What does health mean to you? Health can be said to be the state of complete physical, mental, and social well-being, and not merely the absence of diseases. Health can also be the enjoyment of the highest standard of health. Health that's free from sicknesses and diseases and all whatnot. Just name them. Now, the rural woman, is this woman living in a remote area. Next slide. Living in a remote area, in a rural place where she cannot fend for herself. But this woman, remember that she's rich in agriculture. She, she, she does so much. She's a farmer. She, she's a nation builder. And so, though living in a rural area, the rural woman needs to be celebrated for the achievements and contributions these women have done to rural development and to economic development. The rural woman has given life to everything that we do. Now, next slide. Why is health important? Traditionally, it is the responsibility of women to look after families. It is our responsibility to control the spread of diseases, to reduce the growing mortality due to lack of adequate health facilities. Now, this woman that, that has given life to people takes care of everyone in the house, most times does not even take care of herself. And so you see that she's taking care of the children, taking care of the, the, the home, the husband, and everything, the in-laws, and every, just name them, but has not taken care of herself. And so it is very important that this woman looks and takes very good care of herself. She needs to put her health first because it is only a healthy person that could take care of every other person. It's just like the plane when you're, the, you, you're about to uh, take off the, the you, you read the um, on the plane and say, you should, just in case of anything, you should put the, the what do you call it? Um, you, you should save yourself first before you even take care of, think of any other person, including even your child. But the woman does not, the first instinct that comes to the woman is, 
how do I take care of everybody around me? And so it is very important today that the rural woman looks and do, takes total care of herself. Now let's look at the value of health. Health is wealth, they say. And having a good health, next slide, is directly related to leading a productive life. The woman needs to pay special attention to her health. You need to pay special attention to your health because it is as important as you are. Only a healthy person can take care of themselves. And women, how we can increase our health is being, by being physically active, exercise daily, ensure that you make sleep a priority. I know it is not easy for women to begin to take care of them. It will even create time to sleep because the woman does not sleep until every other person is asleep. But she needs to take care of herself. She needs to sleep. She needs to rest. She needs to even have time to, to pre-examine herself. Mental stress and depression is a serious issue. And when a woman does not take care of her health, it, it gets to so many things. She needs to stay healthy by improving her diet. The roles of women are reproductive, productive, and even community managing roles. And so for a woman who has cut across doing all these things, if she doesn't take care of herself, then it's going to be it, it's going to be catastrophe. Now let's look at self-care. Self-care, quite a number of people don't even think about self-care. We don't see that um, we need to take our time to take care of ourselves, to take care of our health to look around us and, and appreciate life, to spend time with friends, to spend time with family, and to spend time with ourselves. There's this saying that says time and wealth are two precious assets that we don't rec recognize and appreciate until it has been depleted. I want to urge all African women if had women in the world, especially the rural women, to take their health seriously, look and see how you can take care of your health. This day, the 15th of October, is dedicated to all the millions of women living in remote and rural places. This day calls for the celebration of the achievements and the contributions that every rural woman has done towards the rural development and agriculture. But we cannot continue celebrating this day. To celebrate this day fully means to celebrate this day with our health in mind. Let us begin henceforth moving forward. Let us match words with action by saying that we will begin to look at our health, we'll begin to take care of ourselves. Next slide is, we'll begin to take care of ourselves, we'll begin to watch what we eat, what we do, and how we put our health as a major priority. Thank you very much for your time. I don't know if you have any questions for me. Uh, Mrs. Philomena, that was brief, but that was really powerful and, you know, um, packed with a lot of um, information about the importance of, um, you know, rural women um, staying healthy, you know, because we, we actually need their contributions um, in our economies, uh, in our society at large. So to our attendees, our listeners, if you have questions for Mrs. Philomena, please Go to the chat box or go to the question and answer section and drop your questions or comments for Mrs. Philomena and she will address them. Um, you know, before our attendees put up their questions, my question for you is, 
um, you know, we see how rural women um, with their minimal or, you know, sometimes no access at all to um, quality medical services, yet they are healthy. You see women in their 60s still, you know, working very hard on farms. Um, how, how do you think, you know, they're able to stay healthy compared to, you know, us women in the cities and, and so on? Okay, thank you. That's a good one. Now, the, the rural woman, because she's physically active, she's always on the, the move, she's always in the farm, she's working, and there, there are um, her herbs also on the field that she could take. <coughs> Sorry. Now, in, in, um, a child has um, a stomach um, upset. She knows what to get. She knows what the leaves to, to take from the farm and take them. Um, to solve the issue of that child. She knows what to, to do um, in cases of even um, reproductive health. She knows one of those, the, what and what to do in the farms there, the, those um, herbal medicines, do the leaves to give to do whoever it's not, um, has um, health challenges. And now because she's always on the move, she's, she's um, going to the farm, she's going to the market, she's moving around. So she's exercising herself. Um, these days in the urban areas, we, we um, it is from the your house to the car, AC, um, to the office, to the church, to the mosque, or wherever. And so, in as much you feel as you feel that you are having a good life, you're also um, cutting down your lifespan by 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 um, should I say by by years, by days, um, because uh, it looks like you're you're having it all there. But then the body is not being exercised. The body is not being put to use. Um, we're not shedding those fats. We're not um, being physically fit. And so the difference between the rural woman and then the the uh, for, and those of us here is that um, constant exercising, that um, daily routine, working, keeping the body body and soul fit, working, and um, just just name it. Thank you so much for your response. Yes, I think uh, that does answer the question. Um, we have some comments. Um, Uche says uh, he likes the definition that if you give her trouble, she will give you double. In essence, what you give is what you get from a rural woman. He's sending lots of love to all rural women out there. He's saying it's your day. And he's also saying thank you for your presentation. Abdullah Hilakan is saying thanks for the wonderful presentation. Uh, Jeremiah Samuel is asking... He, he said he, he, that was a very wonderful facilitation, but he's also asking how do we provide more healthcare facilities to women in the rural areas? He says also there's um, awareness in the urban areas that one doesn't have to be ill to carry out medical checks. So how do we also reciprocate this awareness in the rural areas? Now, thank you. Now we could reciprocate this uh, awareness in the rural areas like today. A number of um, organizations, I'm sure, are out there reaching out to these women, letting them know the, the importance of being healthy, the importance of taking their health seriously. Now, organizations could go and set up a, a, a state-of-the-art health care centers for the rural women. Now, you, you, you could even do it yourself. If we could do that, it could, you could set up a project, come up with a program that would cater for the needs of the rural woman. We don't have excellent health facilities in the rural areas. A proposal can be written or you can come together as a community. You can go to the community and engage the traditional rulers, get local manpower, engage the people in the community and ask them. So everybody would come together and ensure that they get they get a facility we could get um volunteer nurses we could get uh, midwives we could get all sorts that would be um employed in that facility the government even to, should it should also be uh, something that could go into document and then ensure that the government begins to see this we're going towards the election year now this could also be something that could be brought to book okay we uh, we need more rural facilities healthcare centers in the rural areas Get the the, um, the the people who are running for office to get to sign this 
And when they are there, we begin to, to hold them to their words and ensure that the rural areas have health, excellent, not just health facilities, but excellent health facilities. And um, awareness, and there has to be more awareness creation for um, people in the rural areas, women especially, to begin to take care of health seriously, to, to check themselves, go for medical checks, how to check um, the, the, the body system, how to check what, what the, and know that once they are 40, they should always go for, for, for different checks. It, it's doable. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Ma, for responding to, to the question. And I think, you know, I agree with you. Uh, this, the theme of this year's uh, International Day of Rural Women is Rural Women Key for a World Free from Hunger and Poverty. And this theme is focusing on equality and women's empowerment because it wants women to fight against the problems of hunger and malnutrition. And I just concluded session, session two with Abdel Latif talked about data driven humanitarian, humanitarianism. And so we can see how, um, you know, we can use different technology to reach out to women in uh, rural areas and use, you know, data we gather from this to design projects and interventions that addresses the issues of uh, rural women so that they have full and productive contribution um, um, to society. And they also stay healthy as well. Uh, Jeremiah Samuel says, thank you, ma'am. Definitely agree with you. Again, if you have any more questions for our speaker, please do not hesitate to drop it in the chat box, or you can also put up your questions in the Q1A um, section as well. Um, and you can also continue to engage our speakers on the Uva app. Um, you can always ask them questions, comments, and have a uh, quick chat with our speakers there. While we're waiting for any more questions, do you have just any final words for us, um, Mrs. Ilomina Zaman? Oh, yes, we have yes. one more question, I think. Um, Uche says, the level of inequality to accessing health facilities is glaring for the rural woman. I know for sure at my village, the women travel distance to access antenatal care because the only small clinic in the village was built to treat eyes. What effective measures can we apply to change this narrative? Yeah, thank you, Uche. I, like I said earlier, awareness creation, awareness creation. We cannot go short of creating as much awareness as possible. I also said the the you that clinic that you have, beautiful, but then you could advocate for more health, excellent health facilities. We, you're in your village, I'm sure you have some, your traditional ruler there. Why don't the word be spoken to the traditional ruler? And then he goes to, to, to meet the, the, is it the counselor, the chairman, and then to the governor. And as I said earlier, this is the time where people are running for office, the election year. We, how do we engage our, uh, our of people who are running for office. This is the time for the, the, the uh, it's not is it, is it, uh, the chiefs to go down to the, the government house and sit with them. Now our village needs water, we need light, and most especially we need an excellent healthcare facility. What would you do to ensure that when you come to office, you do this and this and this for the community, not going to the community to ask them for a bag of rice or whatnot, no, no, but what will they do to ensure that they bring development into those communities? And when this is done, and ensure that they sign, of course, and so when they, uh, they get into office, as whoever, you ensure that they, they keep their words, they, those promises that they made, they do it. And remember, we could call our office holders. I'm sure we don't know this, or you do know that, but we could recall them. And so when um, citizens begin to get involved and we begin to know that these people are in the office to serve us, to do what we want, um, I think citizens will begin to be more proactive and not just um, say our votes will not count, but will ensure that they, 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 their votes count by voting rights. Not just that, we could even get um, uh, 
organizations who could would also write a proposal to see that uh, a, an excellent healthcare facility is brought to that village of yours. Could talk to Iwi, and then they'll see how they could set up a structure there. And that, and of course, that's if it meets their 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 man, if it's their area of um, their mandate. But if it's not, the organizations who are, are centered around healthcare, they could do something around having an excellent healthcare, or even that eye clinic you have in your hospital and your village can be expanded to to um, have um, so many other things. It's there's a whole lot. Well, it's just um, ensuring that we we put things in order. I don't know if I've answered your question. Yes, thank you so much. Um, there's another question in the question and answer. Uh, Abdullah Hiladan is saying that despite the unacknowledged contributions of rural women to the economy, especially agriculture, these women are left exposed to abusive partners. A research here in Kaduna, Brinangwari local government area precisely, has it that 73% of women are so okay with their partners physically abusing them. That is just a result of low awareness and lack of access to support. So his question is, what would be your advice for CSOs and CBOs in urban community to implement funded or non-funded projects in their communities? Now, for there are a number of uh, CSOs and CBOs that are advocating for the, uh, gender-based the, the violence, the issues of gender-based uh, violence. There are referral pathways. Quite a number of them are doing a whole lot. Their sensitization is going on. There are projects to um, prevent and pre protect. There, there's just a whole lot to that. Now, the reason why a woman would want her spouse to beat her up uh, is because, um, not necessarily because uh, she she is not aware, because of course everybody knows what is good and what is bad for them. So it's probably because they they have um, they either grew up with the pa either parent beating the other parents, and then they feel that that is how it is. Believe it or not. And so when you go into counseling with such women you'll find out that um there was it's it's some that's coming from somewhere it's not because they like what is going on but because they just feel that it is the norm so um a whole lot of 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 public awareness needs to be to be done sensitization if you see something say something you see a neighbor that um you the neighbor used to be outspoken and suddenly is, is withdrawn you could find out a number of people are going through trauma a number of women are going through untold depression and um, those communities of course that you know you could do that you could reach out to organizations you know are uh, working on on um, sexual and gender-based violence issues and they'll go into those communities sensitize the community and set up a referral party so whenever this these things are, are seen action will be taken immediately thank you does that answer you Thank you. Um, thank you so much. Um, that indeed uh, answers the question that, you know, most women growing um, have been raised in communities that view um, fiscal abuse as the norm and, you know, they need to have new reorientation that shifts, um, that changes these narratives. Nati Bonnet has a question. He says, um, he's saying good day and thank you for the wonderful session. His question thank is you. how can the rural woman be informed on how to properly cater for her health. Because as we all know, information is limited in rural areas. So what form or medium of communication can be more efficient to them in their various locality? Thank you. As I said, it's just awareness, awareness, awareness. A whole lot of awareness creation. <laughs> enlightenment women need to be to know um csos volunt can volunteer and go to the community and engage the traditional rulers engage women groups engage everybody that needs to be engaged they should know so when you go to the traditional rulers place you ask that you, you won't just sit with the men but sit with the women too 
and engage them. Let them know why they should take care of themselves, why their health is important to them. And when they begin to know this, now when you, 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 it's not something you do in one day, you, it, it should be continuous. You, you'd speak, you'd speak and speak until they understand the, the importance of catering for their health, taking care of themselves and even the people around them. Once they continually hear this, they would um, begin to take care of themselves. But first, you have to engage the traditional rulers, engage the women, engage the women groups, engage everyone that needs to be engaged. They would now know this. They, they can't get all those more communicate, but those, though that medium of communication needs to be taken seriously. Once this is done, once women are involved in every gathering, it will be passed down. We have church settings, we have um, traditional rulers, we have the... the, the a uh, uh, mosque and everything. Once this is, is done, it's um, as good as done. Thank you. This is Philomena. Um, Abdullah says, yes, sure. Um, your response is indeed enlightening. Um, Thank you. you know, there are various ways to continue to engage rural women to appreciate their efforts and to even increase their contribution um, to addressing different societal problems. Um, at EWEI, we're open to partnerships with women at, uh, in rural communities um, and other CSOs, CBOs, and stakeholders in rural communities um, who are looking to address any um, um, societal issues that they are experiencing and want to partner with an organization to implement projects and interventions to address these issues. Um, thank you all for your questions and contributions. Um, if you have any more questions, please go ahead and ask our speaker. Um, if not, then we will go ahead and take our poll that informs us of you know, how well we've done and what we need to improve on in order to best um, respond to the needs of our attendees and you know, those learning from the conference. Um, Mrs. Philomena, if you have any last words for us and for even rural women, um, you know, who are joining us today before we end the session. Thank you. Well, I would say that time and health are two precious assets that we don't recognize and appreciate until they have been depleted. It is important that we take very good care of our health because what, if we let it slide, it will be very difficult to, to get back on track. So thank you very much e, for this opportunity. Thank you all the participants. I wish you a beautiful day. Enjoy the rest of the day and um, happy International Day for the Rural Woman. Well, let us continue, let us join hands together to ensure that the Rural Woman has her place in society. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Mrs. Philomena. Um, the poll is up. Please respond to the poll and let us know what you think of this session and what we can improve on. Um, and in one minute, we will be taking a group photograph, uh, the speaker and the panelists will take a quick group photograph you know, to document this session. Thank you so much, Mrs. Philomena, for joining us. Give us one minute for um, attendees to take the poll and then we'll take a quick um, photograph. Thank you very much. Um, our panelists, uh, can you please turn on your camera and say cheese, or in our case, we say a goosey, mm -hmm. and you know, we have a good, uh, good photograph.
All right, thank you so much, um, Mrs. Philomena Zamani, for making out time to share with us um, this beautiful presentation on health for the rural woman. Um, thank you to our attendees for engaging, listening, commenting, asking questions. Thank you to the technical team for taking care of everything behind the scenes and everybody else is, you know, supporting to make sure that, uh, you know, our sessions go smoothly.